Hi, and welcome to BIOS Explorer. My name is Stuart Hayward. I was born here in Bermuda, and I've been involved in protecting Bermuda's environment for almost 40 years. Some of the things I've been involved in, uh, Admiralty House Park Association, which uh, reserved a park for the Bermudan public. I helped co-author and co-edited a book called Bermuda's Delicate Balance, and eventually, I was elected to Parliament on an environmental platform. So I guess you can tell that this little island is very important to me. I believe we are really a jewel in the Atlantic Ocean, but there are some pressing issues. Among them is our population density. Bermuda at 3,000 people per square mile is one of the most densely populated places on the planet. Uh, and that the pressure that the people put on this island is tremendous. Also, with the issue of global warming and sea level rise, this little island could eventually disappear. Um, and that, that would be the end of the rock. So we're glad that you're here to look at these issues and to help us find some solutions that we can apply here to our little island of Bermuda and also to the entire planet. Thanks very much for being here. I hope you enjoy the program. Well, welcome everyone to Bias Explorer and our theme this year, On the Rock. This year, we're looking at Bermuda as a living rock in the middle of the ocean formed by a volcano millions of years ago and today continually created and destroyed. Coral reefs even today are building more Bermuda and the ocean around us is eroding some of that rock away. How are we as humans contributing to this? Are some human activities causing erosion to increase? Is the sea level rising because of us? And will Bermuda still be here a hundred years from now because of ocean acidification? Well, as well as trying to answer these questions, we're going to dive inside of Bermuda, look at what's down in these mysterious caves inside the rock, and also look at the deep ocean around Bermuda. So stay tuned as we explore On the Rock. The coral reefs of the world face a number of stresses, including sea level rise, increased temperatures, increased ultraviolet radiation. But one of the stresses we frequently overlook is ocean acidification. Well, you heard about global warming, that the temperature is increasing because of increasing greenhouse gases, where CO2, carbon dioxide, is the greenhouse gas that's causing the largest increase in the temperature. CO2 is also absorbed by the ocean because of the increase in the atmosphere. And this results in a decrease in the pH. And the pH is a measurement of the acidity. So as more carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean, the acidity of the ocean increases. And that has been termed ocean acidification. What? All right, let me break this down for you. Carbon dioxide is absorbed into the water to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid then loses a hydrogen ion to form bicarbonate. Bicarbonate then loses another hydrogen ion to form carbonate. But as you have more carbon dioxide, you end up with more hydrogen ions. And the more hydrogen ions there is, the more acidic something is. And that is why we call this ocean acidification. And here's the proof. Uh, what we're going to do is rig up an air stone through a pipe to, uh, to this bike and see if the emissions from a bike are actually going to make seawater more acidic. So we're just going to use our pH meter here, swirl it through the seawater, and seawater typically is a pH of around 8. Now we're going to hook up the bike. So we've got an air stone on the end of our tube and we're going to plug this in the end of the uh, muffler. is 6.1. It's showing us that the CO2 coming from the bike is making the salt water pH go down. 
As you add more carbon dioxide to the equation, you get more hydrogen ions, more bicarbonate, but less carbonate. And if you're a calcifying marine invertebrate, it's all about the carbonate. Carbonate ions is used by calcifying marine organisms, such as corals, that produce their, the skeletons and shells out of calcium carbonate. What happens is there's a change in the seawater chemistry and the bicarbonate iron actually ends up increasing but the carbonate iron, which is the important one for calcification, actually decreases. And so what happens is there isn't enough carbonate iron necessarily to create calcification. So what that really means is that the corals can't grow as well. Um, corals form a skeleton, an exoskeleton of calcium carbonate and they have tissue over the top. So the tissue is a living veneer over the top and then the skeleton is underneath, an exoskeleton. And so what happens with ocean acidification is this growth rate, this increase of the skeleton or the calcification if you like, the corals putting the skeleton down on a daily basis is going to decrease. And there's really no doubt about that. Almost all experiments show that the rate of calcification or the rate of growth decrease as the carbonate ion concentration decrease. A second consequence, though, of calcification is that as the carbonate ion concentration decreases, the dissolution of carbonate minerals and reef stru structures increases. So you can actually see the calcium carbonate skeleton break down. It can actually dissolve. 